Good afternoon, Manufacturing All-Stars, and welcome to this episode of Manufacturing Happy Hour. We're coming at you live from LiveWorks in Boston, Massachusetts with our partner PTC, and today on this episode, you're gonna learn about how you can use a digital twin to optimize your operation. This is an exciting topic. I'm stoked for this one today, and I'm joined by Ahm Thompson. Cheers, Ahm. Cheers, Chris. Welcome to the show. Mm -hmm. mm. And Ahm works. Uh, works. Re yeah, we're having we're having a nice logger today. Ahm works for uh, our CTO here at Rockwell in strategic development. And digital twins are a popular topic right out there today. And I think the big question is, you know, how do you use something like that to op really truly optimize your operation, get through a project quicker, get better R ROIs, and really simulate your facility before you're spending a lot of money doing the troubleshooting on the operation itself. So I guess to get a baseline, can you get tell us? what's going on behind us right now? Absolutely. So what we have here is actually we, we're using an Emulate 3D backdrop mm -hmm. to simulate and run the mechanical side of a beverage line. Right. So we're running 700 can per minute mm -hmm. clock tower brew. Mm -hmm. And we're using the original code that would be used to operate the system. Mm -hmm. The original HMI projects, Yep. we're running this against the Emulate 3D in the backdrop. Yeah. And we'll do some little bit later on We'll do some fancy stuff with some sure. operations on the machine. Yep. Um, and you're coupling these pieces together and you're actually mm -hmm. designing things or you're creating things that you do anyway. So you would take sure. a Creo application in okay. the mechanical side, okay. bring that into Emulate 3D. Yep. Creo is a mechanical design work that is part of the Right, thank you for uh, providing that of, context. Of, of that part. Perfect. And the and you're coupling this now into Emulate 3D, which understands mm -hmm. how we in, in Logix think and work, so it couples directly with right. A pack controller. Mm -hmm. The pack controller contains the entire application code for all the machines, yeah. all the conveying systems, and all so forth. So every speed, every position, every valve, every contactor yeah. is simulated in this system. Yeah, so what I'm hearing is, and this I feel like this is an important point, this is not like an animation behind us by any means. No. This is straight up controlled Correct. by a controller, just like an automation facility would. So just wanted to make sure people knew that as, as we were getting deeper into it. That's a huge part of the value around. Around something like this. Yeah, no, it's it's it, people create animations for mm -hmm. selling. Mm -hmm. This is created for testing, right? Validation of a, of a Great system. Great differentiate. Yeah, it's wait, huge, right? I love that. So you create it actually at the time when you've built your design drawings before mm -hmm. you start manufacturing the actual equipment. Mm -hmm. What it helps you do in the end is find all the bottlenecks in the line, sure. Uh, mm -hmm. all the the parts where critical speed optimization is necessary. Mm -hmm. These lines take well, three to six months to finally optimize in their speed configurations and so forth. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to do that while the system is being built and thereby yeah. you cut the time short as you said earlier. We bring in an early ROI as a right. big value proposition. You mentioned cutting this. it down to being able to do that type of optimization in this in a matter of weeks versus a matter Correct. of three to six months. So Correct. if you're thinking just in terms the value of like your production like imagine doing this in a, let's say a two-week period for right. example versus a three to six month period that absolutely. is at least a sixth or I think even a twelfth of the amount of time it takes. absolutely that's cool the other side to it is um, there's lots of data that's being part of that's mm -hmm. part of this right and wouldn't it be great that actually not only you're simulating but you're finding mm -hmm. automatically finding what are the shortfalls of the system yeah that's that would be a a huge win, yes. And we're employing our Logix AI mm -hmm. in these configurations, and we're mm -hmm. using a new technology called Smart Tags to feed the data points that represent the volume of cans on a, on a conveyor, mm -hmm. the amount of speed of, of a machine, mm -hmm. feeding that directly mm -hmm. into the AI. Yeah. The AI now recognizes what the filler does, what the packaging system does, yeah. and can now build, starting build, to build relationships between those, mm -hmm. and thereby, first of all, it can project what's my line OE okay and the second step to this is mm -hmm. you can actually start varying speeds varying 
behaviors off mm -hmm. your system mm -hmm. and find better optimizations. Sure. And thereby, you're not only doing this manually, mm -hmm. and by manually doing it, you're already cutting time short because you mm -hmm. have something you're actually testing against. Right. But now by putting an AI against this, mm -hmm. you're adding to this because you're now building potentially what is something you cannot find yourself, Sure. but something that looks at 500 data points at the same time. Yeah. While we, with our eyes, yeah, I'm getting older. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's taking us typically, right? It's taking mm -hmm. us typically weeks or months to find the older relationships. Mm -hmm. We can simulate this into the AI. The AI finds it and starts mm -hmm. optimizing the system. As well, we exactly. It sounds like this artificial intelligence, what it does is it, it does that optimization for you. It tells you and it, it learns your Correct. system and tells you where the optimization is without necessarily having, you know, the user having to figure it out themselves. Correct. Well, and the other part is because you're doing it in a simulation, mm -hmm. you're not breaking material. Mm -hmm. You're not breaking machines, mm -hmm. right? If the, if the machine doesn't work anymore, yeah. it tells you it doesn't work anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Things start and stop and so forth. Let me maybe show you how we yeah, actually operate. Yeah, please do. That would be, be great. We're right the, here in front of it, so the, I'd love to see it. In the view, right? So uh, this application here, this console here is actually part of the Emulate 3D application. Mm -hmm. We're bringing in the visualization on the back end, and when I change the view here, okay. um, I actually go to the filler machine, and you're running, you're seeing the machine running here on, right. on the left side, mm -hmm. and you're seeing on the right side, you're seeing the machine HMI. Mm -hmm. For those with good eyes, you'll see that there is a viewpoint active here, and the viewpoint projects okay. out of an RS USA project that contains yeah. the exact screens. So what I'm going to do is I just go with the mouse over here, mm -hmm. pause this machine, and you're going to see on the left side, mm -hmm. the cans actually are stopping. Yeah. You can even see here the stack lights mm -hmm. going into orange. Yeah. Right? I'm mm -hmm. going to go back into the simulation and go go back to the to the bird's eye view, mm -hmm. and I can see down here on the bottom left, I can see that the conveyors are running oh, yeah. empty it's because stopped. my my, yeah. my filler has actually stopped. Right. So that's pretty this cool. Is, and it's very quick. It's the same thing. It's actually you're going mm -hmm. faster from one machine to the other in mm -hmm. virtual than you're doing in real world. Right. This mm -hmm. has 20, 30 meters to run, and uh, breaking your back jumping over conveyors, which you can avoid in a simulation to do. Right. right. So going back to it, restarting the system, mm -hmm. I can also test my operation schemes. I can train operators with this, right? I can give a training tool. Yeah, also, so okay. This is this is what when you look at most simulation and digital twin models, uh -huh. the original purpose was mostly training. Yeah. But mostly what people did is, and you so, sh said it earlier, you have animation parts and pieces, and you stack mm -hmm. them against each other, and so you show an operator what he actually sees. Mm -hmm. This is simpler. Yeah. We actually take the real world machine, we take mm -hmm. the real operating screens, we are building it all together. So you're mm -hmm. really seeing the physical equipment, you're seeing your, your actual position of where you stand, mm -hmm. yeah? and you're actually seeing the, the exact screen yeah. in that context of how the machine operates. So well, big I, value, right? Yeah, this, I mean, this is 100% real world. I love that yep. example where you were able to stop the machine, you're able to see the effects to the other parts yep. of the line. So this is, this is literally exactly what someone will be seeing on their plant floor. Absolutely. And I'm going to play devil's advocate for a second because I'm sure some people are thinking, you know, hey, digital twin, is this really going to perfectly model what I'm going to see in environment? Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, there's there's no perfect digital twin ever, right? Okay. And nobody That's will ever. That's a good disclaimer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> nobody will ever try to do that. Mm -hmm. What this one does is, it's line simulation, it's coordination simulation, mm -hmm. it's building the line before you actually build the line. Right. Right. You simulate something before you actually create it. Mm -hmm. It's not trying to simulate each bolt, nut, right. sprocket, chain, sure. conveyor, belt, or whatever. Mm -hmm. It tries to give you an overall view of how that whole system will operate. Mm -hmm. And it gives you, if it gives you afterwards, 80, 90%, mm -hmm. and you do the last five to 10% in okay. the real system. That makes sense, yeah. And, and you find actually what will be the bottlenecks and you can increase a conveyor length because mm -hmm. it might actually be necessary and sure. you don't want to do this six months after, you want to do this at the, at the front line. At the start of it, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, if it's like like you said, we you know again going from three to six months down to let's say a couple weeks in in, in this simulation, you know even if there is like you said that ten percent that you do have to do on the physical equipment afterwards, that's right. still significantly less than what you would have been doing before. So I like that reality check you gave us there. <laughs> um, now speaking of reality checks, you know can you give us like an example? I know we're looking at a great demonstration behind us, but can you give us an example of where we might have seen someone take advantage of this in the real world? Sure. So what you're seeing here is obviously is a very large 
large line, right? We have mm -hmm. five large assets. Um, probably our customers are in smaller footprints today that they're actually creating with okay. this. Okay, okay. So we have a large pharmaceutical company mm -hmm. that builds around 30, 40, 50 process skids a year. Mm. And they're creating these, and they've created these with our own solutions business, and um, they've used Emulate 3D mm -hmm. to simulate the behavior with mm -hmm. different interfaces on how these skids get integrated in the real world. Okay, so and so they validate their processes on how these, how these, how the skid from all of the interfaces, interlocks, operational pieces, and think okay. about a pharmaceutical mm -hmm. company. Sure. You know, one error. Right. Right. You ruins your whole reputation. You mm -hmm. start, you, know, mm -hmm. you start messing with the health of people. Yeah. You don't want to do this. So you want to have simulation that enables mm -hmm. you to qualify, validate the equipment mm -hmm. before it actually comes into play. So it's kind of like a subset of like this whole process Correct. we're seeing. Then they're using yep. it specifically for that validation piece. Correct. So absolutely. Um, I can only imagine there are a lot of other applications that go into this. Probably not all of them that we can talk about on on this specific episode. But what would you recommend as a call to action where people can get more information on this? Well, Emulate 3D is. is uh, is a company we just recently acquired. Mm -hmm. you know, they have, if you go out on Google, you'll find an Emulate 3D. You'll find, you'll find mm -hmm. lots of material, including all the different CAD formats that it can integrate to. Okay. Right? And obviously today we're we're here sitting with our logics controller that actually runs this. Mm -hmm. um, we're further and further in optimization of all these steps, right? So you'll, mm -hmm. there is going to be a lot more news on this. Mm -hmm. It's going to be part of our design suite, right? Okay. So we announced this this last past week at, at Ticket. Mm -hmm. We announced the four different suites at Rockwell. Mm -hmm. Design suite is what's going to cover this because it is at the time mm -hmm. of designing the equipment that mm -hmm. we're employing this, and it perfectly ties into the solutions business of PTC mm -hmm. in terms of the Creo and uh, integration and so forth. Love it. And just I'm going to have a link where you can learn more about Emulate 3D and this overall design uh, setup below this video. In the meantime, Aham, thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. For those of you out there, stay innovative, stay thirsty. We'll catch you again here real soon.